Good Friday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, coming to you on this very uh, rainy morning over here. Just glad to be with you in the confines of my car early this morning to come with you to the thought of the day um, as we start the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. As I was going through this book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, we read obviously the story of where God told Jonah to do something. Instead of doing what he told him to do, he tried to run away from the presence of God. Uh, we are told in uh, verse 7, uh, he's on a boat, and when the people on the boat find out that it was a storm that came, and there was a lot of trouble on the boat and the waters, and they found out it was Jonah's fault, uh, it reminds me, number one, that your sin will find you out. Uh, Numbers chapter 32, verse 23 reminds us of that. Uh, you often hear me say this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, when Adam and Eve sinned, the first thing they did Verses 7 and 8 is try to cover themselves with fig leaves and tried to hide from the presence of God. And as Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 says, there's nothing new under the sun. That is how, how we are by nature. When we sin against God, it is our nature to try to hide from God. It's in our nature to hide from others. I think it's ultimately best um, to confess our faults because nothing that we do hidden, we think is hidden, will be exposed. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke of that in Luke chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 is a reminder again that everything is open before the Lord. And John chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, Christ knows the heart. He knows what's going on. You can't hide from the Lord. But secondly, I wanted to also speak, because I did speak about this recently, about how your sin will find you out. And we're seeing it in the life of Jonah. But... I, to Jonah's credit, I believe that his recovery back to a right relationship with God begins in verse 12 of Jonah chapter 1, where um, when he finds out and the people find out that he is to be, to, be, to be blamed for what's going on on the boat, he tells them, throw me off the boat. I'm the problem. Let me die. Now, it might sound like he's looking to die by suicide. You know, like there's a, a some people... There's a phrase, suicide by cop, where people just want to die and they hope a cop shoots them. Um, people sometimes might not want to die, but they don't want to live no more. And so Jonah is at this point. They do throw him off the boat. But it is kind of a reminder also that Jonah did come to the realization that his sin had found him out. And he was being honest. And he said, just get rid of me. I'm the problem. Confession is good for the soul. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Honesty is the best policy. Proverbs 28, 13 is a good reminder um, that if we try to conceal our sins, we won't find no mercy. But if we confess our sins, there's great gain in that. My friends, confession is good for the soul, and it takes humility. Um, sometimes even in church or in our relationships with others, you know, whenever there's a dispute, is always the finger pointing. And remember, whenever you point one finger at someone, four fingers are pointing back at you. And that's what happens. We build ourselves in these trenches. We, we, uh, we try to preserve our reputation and our own selves. And we, we combat with each other. And we fight with each other. I think it's best that we just honestly confess where we're wrong. Uh, recently in my own church, I was confronted by some of the younger men in the church that me as an older man, I need to be more involved in the lives of some of the younger men. Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and 48 uh, tells our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ basically said to him, much is given, much is required. Receiving correction is a sign of maturity. It's a sign of humility. Now, we don't go on self-pity parties. Um, I do believe in carrying my heart on a sleeve, and I've confessed. I've confessed that I have failed. I have failed my brothers and sisters at times. That's part of the solution. When I was in the 12-step program for drugs and alcohol years ago, they used to tell you the first step in recovery is admitting you have a problem. But we don't stop there. We also work on where we are wrong and to make it better. Taking correction, receiving instruction, even a rebuke, and going on from there. My friends, today, I hope today's devotional video will help us to learn to confess our sins. Try not to hide things in your heart. Know that despite whatever you're going through, you have a Redeemer in Jesus Christ. 
Job chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, Job knew that his Redeemer lived despite everything that he was going through and all the pain and affliction he was going through in life. In Leviticus chapter 25, verse 25, in the uh, law of Moses, the, the Pentateuch, we read that if an Israelite was um, broke financially, so to speak, and had to sell himself, someone close to him, a Redeemer, uh, a relative close to him was to redeem him. It's called a kinsman redeemer. That's basically what Christ is. Christ is close to us. He redeemed us. We often like to quote Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It's great verses. We are saved by grace, by faith in Christ alone. But read the rest of that chapter. Verse 10 tells us that we're saved by grace through faith unto good works. It doesn't stop there by just being saved. We have to show, you know, a tree is known by its fruits, not by its suits. We have to show that we are saved. But read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, where it says that we were dead in our sins. We were the sons and daughters of disobedience, following the prince of the air, following Satan. But verse 4 tells us in Ephesians 2, but God, but God, those are two of the most beautiful words you'll hear in the word of God in the Bible. But God, God in his mercy saved us in Christ our Lord and Savior. My friends, yes, we do fail. Jonah, we're reading here in Jonah chapter 1, failed. He tried to run from what God had told him to do. There are times I've run, I ran, tried to be my own little bubble, my own little cocoon, and hide from the others and the responsibilities I have put for others. But when we are corrected in love, not self-righteously, but when people correct us biblically, receive the correction. You often hear remind myself, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 and 6. Open rebuke is better than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. We by nature want to have our ears tickled. We want to feel good. We want to have this feeling when we come out of church or in the presence of other Christians of a better self-esteem about ourselves. That's not Christianity, my friends. We are to, at times, be... Not so much full of self-esteem about ourselves, but having esteem for Christ and Him alone, and also for others, listening to others, thinking about others more than ourselves. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. To have the mind of Christ is to think of others more than yourself. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video. May we learn from Jonah, Lord God, in our own lives, not to hide from your presence, because you see everything going on. May we learn to be humble and confess our faults, repent, and learn to truly follow Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all, my friends.